Khadija had been married twice before in the days of Jahiliyyah. Uh, and both of her husbands had uh, died. According to one report, one of them died and one of them divorced her. According to another report, both of them died. The first husband of hers was Abu Hind. Abu Hind. And this marriage resulted in uh, two sons, Hind and Hala. And the second marriage was to Atiq ibn Abid al-Makhzumi and this did not lead to any children. So Khadija had two boys, two sons, Hind and Hala, even though Hala uh, in our times is primarily a girl's name, but Hala was also a boy's name in that time. And so Hind and Hala uh, were both sons of Khadija. It is also rumored that she had other children uh, from the second husband, but the people have differed about that. We don't have any reference of them. So most likely she only had two of, uh, of the sons. And the most famous of them is Hind. Hind accepted Islam along with his mother Khadija. We don't know much about Hala, uh, whether he accepted Islam or not. Hind accepted Islam along with his mother and he died a shaheed in one of the battles after uh, the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now Khadija, because of the death of her two husbands, it appears that these marriages left her a very wealthy woman, especially the marriage of her second husband Atiq. Because they didn't have any children and Atiq apparently did not have any brothers. So when Atiq died, all of her money was then, in, all of his money was then inherited by Khadija. And we learn from this that Khadija became the wealthiest single lady in all of Mecca. She became the richest lady in all of Mecca. And on top of that, she is the daughter of the chieftain of the Banu Asad. And in those days, being the daughter of the chieftain and being wealthy, this meant everything. This is the most important thing for a marriage. And this made her, as Ibn Ishaq says, the most desirable lady of Mecca. She was the one that all of the suitors would be interested in, but she herself, after having been married twice, she did not apparently have, see any need to get married again until, as we will come to, uh, the Prophet ﷺ. Now Khadija, as we said, had been left with a lot of money. And she is one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest lady of all of Mecca. And this also shows us that we know that Jahili society did not allow women to rise up. We know that Jahili society put women down. They had killed daughters at birth. They would not allow women to inherit the general rule. Nonetheless, once in a while, it would happen that a woman would inherit money, such as the case of Khadija. And so it's not as if it was a blanket rule that no woman could ever do anything. In the story of Khadija, we learn that even in Jahili society, women had a place and status, not anywhere close to what they had after Islam, but still Khadija is earning her own money, and she controls her money, and she is an independent lady. So there is some room for independence even in Jahili society.